I teach um, Nutrition 313, which is titled Contemporary Nutrition. And I actually, am, I love this course because I wrote the course proposal a few years back um, saying we should have a GE course in nutrition. And after a couple years um, going through the curriculum committee, the course was approved. It was offered face-to-face -face only once, and then it was selected to be um, put online. So it's been online for three years now. Um, and it's doing great, growing a lot. It's gone from initial enrollment around 25 students to close to 800 students. The first time I offered the course, I decided to lecture live in Wimba. So the students would use the web conferencing tool. We would all meet in Wimba at a specified time, and I would lecture live. Um, I did this the first couple times, and what I noticed is that, you know, as enrollment grew, um, students weren't coming to the live sessions. So even if I tried to tie, you know, a small participation points to it, I wasn't getting a big turnout for the live sessions. So I decided to start making them asynchronous. I decided to start archiving them, um, keeping anything time sensitive out, and reusing those archives from semester to semester. Now what this did though is it really did remove me from being in the intimate classroom setting that some of the students like. So I've done some polling and I figured out that not a large percentage of the students want to come to these specified times. Um, that's the reason they're taking an online class. But how could I, you know, get involved with them, um, interact with them without making them come to this synchronous session? So the concept of the interactive archive is kind of a, an overlapping of these two things. So I use the taped archives for information that isn't time sensitive um, to describe and explain things in an introductory fashion and then I meet them in the archive at a certain time to layer in time sensitive stimulating controversial type topics that the students have brought up in the past. Um, so they're getting the canned introductory material as well as extended um, information or knowledge layered in there as well and I find that the turnout for those interactive sessions has been pretty good and it provides for the students that want that live interaction it provides it for them and the students that don't want that live interaction are you know reading the text listening to those canned lectures and they're perfectly happy with that also <laughs> so that's I've gone from doing it completely live to completely asynchronous now I'm doing a combination of both yes uh, while we're in the live lectures what I do I have two screens open one is my instructor account and one is my student user account and what I do here is I'll start the archive at exactly a certain time so the students that are going to meet me in here we're usually in about 10 till the hour and we talk a little bit before and then we press play at one o'clock sharp so we all listen together and then at certain points and of course they're free to just openly ask questions anything that interests them or they need clarification on they'll ask but I found in this semester is my first time piloting this idea that sometimes they don't come with material ready. They're not really prepared or have anything written that they want to know more about and they're listening for the, to the lecture for the first time so they're not sure of what they want to ask. So what I've done is started compiling questions that students have asked in the past and I'm placing those in the perfect spots so that now they're not this noise that is unrelated to what I'm speaking about. They're perfectly placed to the exact content that we're talking about. So the way it works is that as we move through the lecture archive, and we're all listening at the and same time, the and I'll keep the volume down on this one, but I'm talking here on the lecture, and then the te text chat box, which is down here in the corner, at certain points in the lecture, I will bring up, and I'll turn this down, because probably a little too much but the lecture archive plays and then when we get into certain points in the lecture I'll bring up with them some stimulating topic that encourages them to interact for example this lecture we're talking about how nutrients are processed and we're talking about digestion and absorption and we might be down here somewhere at um let's see try to find a good spot we might be talking about how nutrients are absorbed in the small intestine and we will be describing the anatomy of the intestinal tract and talking about how nutrients and where nutrients are absorbed. And then we might bring up something more specific, like on this slide particularly. This would have been my first point where I started stimulation in this lecture by asking, um, does anyone notice the explosion of gluten-free products? So we're talking about the small intestine. We're talking about celiac disease. That's something that's not going to change. That's information that I can feel confident in archiving. There's nothing time sensitive about the ideology and symptoms of gluten sensitivity. So we talk about that in the taped archived. And then in here, we talk about the trendiness of gluten-free diets. I ask them if they've ever tried a gluten-free diet, um, some of the benefits of gluten-free diets, some of the foods available in the market that are gluten-free. Um, so we go on in this fashion to encourage them to participate. And they really do. They really do, I think, um, have a good time 
with doing this. And then we'd move on. And then somewhere else in the lecture, I'm talking about now, you know, something that happens in metabolism. And so I'll bring up in that point, have you guys ever heard of carnitine? Well, this is taken to get that fat into the mitochondria so that oxidative phosphorylation can occur. So basically it's me taking non-time sensitive information and recording it and then layering it with very time sensitive information over top of it. And so that works and it's kind of hard to see from far away in a video, but the students will ask question here and they'll type in and then you can see that I can see who's asking the question and I can answer question here. And I hit enter and this is how we're communicating the entire time. And believe it or not, even though you're typing, it actually goes really quick. Um, and the student comments do come in rather quick too. So I'd say one of the challenges with doing this is especially if it's something that's interesting to them. So if I have 25, 30 people in here with me, um, you know, they're all flying in. Oh, I've tried gluten-free flour. I've tried a gluten-free this. And so I'm trying to keep up. Um, but, it, but it is working out okay because a lot of times I can consolidate their comments and questions into, you know, large general answers back to them. So they're maintaining this dialogue. And then they'll, again, some things that aren't related get brought up. I'm talking now about celiacs and gluten sensitivity and someone will bring up fair trade coffee. And this is what I wanted to prevent with the regular synchronous lectures with nutrition everyone knows something so I'm we're talking about you know nutrient absorption in the small intestine and people are asking if I buy fair trade coffee and I was finding this was a problem with doing them just regular lifestyle um, so this allows me to insert those points you know into a, a more appropriate place and I still do get unrelated questions during these interactive sessions but I'm more easily able to next time I'll place that in the right spot and let them know on the learning objectives we will be learning about fair trade and it's an extension topic, meaning that I'm not going to test you on it. It's just if you want to extend your knowledge, it's an optional thing. So these topics that I bring up in here, the topics that they're responding to and interacting with me, there's always a reading to support that posted in Blackboard. So if I can't illustrate in this um, you know, forum everything I want them to know, I'll post for them some additional reading materials about that topic. I also would love if there was a spot that I could um, have ahead of time prepared my prompts for discussion so that I could just drag or copy or drop those in because now, you know, just like redoing the art lectures every single time, now I'm retyping in every time. Anyone notice the explosion of this? Anyone using this? What's the trendiness? Is celiacs real or is it a trend or a fad? So now I'm, I'm having to retype this stuff all the time, which is fine. It's still better than re-lecturing and, you know, retyping. But if there was a spot where I could drag and drop comments and if I could simultaneously and another feature that would be great is if I could pause you know while we're working here I'm still describing to them the anatomy of the small intestine while we're talking about the trends going on with celiac free or gluten free products so if I could pause and we could all work together during this session that would be nice so because I, I do feel like some of the students may not participate um, the ones that come live because they're they're trying to listen to it um, then again, they can always listen twice. So that's kind of my assumption when I'm going off on something and when students are interacting that they'll be able to go back and listen to the lecture material again. Now, we don't have a feature in Wimba to record this session though. So now the students that don't come live don't get to learn more about, you know, celiacs or gluten-free products. Um, there's been tons of great topics brought up in this method, though. More topics than I ever could have gotten to in a traditional live Wimble lecture because you get a few questions, but you need to get the content covered. This has allowed me to bring in so much more and really be there for those students who do want that interaction and that dialogue with me. It's great.